Well, let's bring in editor for Space Flight Now, uh, Stephen Clark. Stephen, by all accounts, a su successful and spectacular launch. That's right. The uh, uh, Shenzhou 13 crew uh, lifted off uh, almost three hours ago uh, on their way to the Chinese space station. Uh, we're expecting to see them dock with the space station in a few more hours, and they'll open hatches and float inside. This launch was at 12.23.53 Eastern Time, or 16.23.53 GMT. Why did it have to be so specific? Well, the mission uh, had to launch at a specific time in order for the spacecraft to be able to rendezvous with the space station. So this, imagine the space station is going around Earth in an orbit, uh, circling the Earth every hour mm -hmm. and a half. And under that orbit, the Earth is actually rotating. So uh, the launch is timed for about the moment that Earth's rotation brings that launch pad in China underneath the flight path of the space station. And then they can shoot off that rocket, and they're lined up already to dock with the space station within a few hours. You know, I don't think I ever knew that. That's, that's fascinating. Let me move on to Wang Yaping, 41 years old. She is China's second woman in space, will become China's first female astronaut to work on this space station, expected to become the first Chinese woman to conduct a spacewalk. Clearly, she's an inspiration. Also, such a moment of pride for China and its women. Right, it, it is. And, uh, you know, it took, uh, I think, NASA and uh, the Soviet Union a couple of decades to uh, have a, uh, an astro a female astronaut woman conduct a spacewalk. So it's heartening and very encouraging to see a very qualified astronaut like Wang Yaping uh, be selected for a spacewalk outside the space station. And uh, it's going to be important work. They're going to be doing spacewalks to work with a robotic arm outside the space station. And that robotic arm will be used in the future once they work on it on this mission. In the future, that arm will be available to move modules around and help assembly of the space station. Their work on the space station is uh, clearly very important. Uh, Stephen, but they'll also have some downtime. Just out of curiosity, would you happen to know what they plan to do in their downtime? Will they have Wi-Fi during the Winter Olympics? They'll still be up there. During the Chinese New Year, they'll still be up there. So how will they spend that fun time? Well, uh, I don't have any insight directly to the plans of uh, the Shinjo 13 crew, but I have talked to plenty of astronauts who have been to space and they've told me one of the best things they like to do is just look out the window because the, the view must be spectacular. Uh, we, we do know they had the, uh, the Chinese space station does have an ability to connect to the Internet. They can watch some television. I expect they will be launching, watching the Olympics uh, next February. And uh, they did mention in the pre-flight news conference that they will have a few surprises planned around the celebration of the Chinese New Year. Hmm. That'll be interesting to see. What about the biggest challenges during this time in space? Six months of weightlessness has to be one of them. This is the longest time they'll be spending in space. Yes, indeed. And uh, uh, the astronauts mentioned as well before the launch that that was probably the biggest single challenge of the mission is living and working in space for six months in, in a sort of a cramped quarters of the space station. Keep in mind the space station, the Chinese space station currently is, uh, you know, only about uh, half, if not uh, less than half the size of, it, of its ultimate uh, volume once the construction is completed. So these three astronauts will be living and working in that uh, uh, cramped volume. They do have the ability to, to you know, the living quarters on board. They have sleep stations. They have a galley. They have a kitchen. And they can do some exercise to uh, counteract the natural tendency of bones and muscle to atrophy after you're in space for so long. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how the astronauts are able to maintain sh their shape and uh, physical well-being throughout the six-month flight. 